What I find out about the lightness, it helps you with your health, your well-being, your fellowship, and it's just, you know, a real good place to be, you know? The Lightness Project, this is hot. The Lightness Project is basically a HIV AIDS program. And without this program, you, you have people with um, the virus that are afraid. And if this, this program brings so many people out to admit and to accept and to once again get into life, like as I said earlier, fellowship and have a place to come. And if they didn't have this place to come in, it's a lot of people that would be out there, just out there, you know, dead, walking dead. The Aliveness Project started in 1985. It was a time of people dying left and right in the 80s of HIV AIDS. A group of people that were living with the disease started meeting in church basements and living rooms over potlucks saying, how can we remain alive? And they continued to meet and have now grown into an organization that served almost 1,600 people last year. One in four of every person in Minnesota identified as living with HIV. Uh, we do so many different things. We do the food shelf, which served almost 44 tons of food last year. We have the hot meal program, which allows people to come in and, and have a meal in that fellowship, that camaraderie. Served nearly 35,000 meals last year. The therapies like acupuncture and massage and shiatsu help so much because so many of the members talk about how the disease affects their body. Old, young, black, white, gay, straight, male, female, everybody comes in through these doors and it's kind of, not kind of, it is the heart of the HIV community. I wouldn't get those treatments if I wasn't involved in the Aliveness Project. I mean, 15 years ago, at 55, I never thought I would get it. And I sure didn't think that my ex would give it to me. It was like, I mean, he was devastated. He didn't realize what it what it actually, what he did, you know. Mentally, to be HIV positive is, you can call it tragedy. Most people uh, close up in a shell. And the virus has been public some 30 odd years. But you can imagine, without a place like this, how many people, what they would do, they would just I see a lot of people that would just fall into a slump or back into that slump. Um, AIDS has a very isolating effect on people. Oftentimes they don't, they feel like they don't have any friends or maybe their friends have, have dumped them or their family has dumped them. So they form new relationships here at the Aliveness Project, which is just something that is hard to put a dollar figure on. I started dropping off here because I'd come down here from up north and rather than to go out and eat, I would stop in here. Started meeting people and found that I had some really good friends and there were a lot of people that were women that were my age. Who knew, you know? It was just, it was just kind of a special thing to find that there were other people here. You might think that the Aliveness Project would be a Debbie Downer kind of place because you think, oh gosh, it's just filled with these people living with HIV. The laughs over lunch. <laughs> The smiles you see after a therapy, the friendships, the people that take time to listen, the staff, the volunteers, the members are all, I mean, it's such a happy place. Uh, we had over a thousand volunteers last year, and we couldn't do it without the volunteers, whether they're doing dining out for life or helping drive for holiday baskets, uh, people in the food shelf, people who come in and clean every week, take the trash out. So. This place couldn't happen without the volunteers. Our current building served us very well. We've been using it, this facility, for like almost, I think it's like 16 years now. We love it, but we have to move on. It's, it's a building that we just have tried our best to make it work for what we're doing to help so many people living with HIV and AIDS. As we enter the building, it's split level. You have up, going downstairs to our dining room and upstairs to the offices and where we provide therapies and and groups, group meetings and stuff. So you have two steps to deal with. We arrive in our kitchen, and it's a nice facility. 
as you can see, but it's not very big. And we do serve like average meal, 70 to 80, even 100 people per meal. And oftentimes we have to have people come and kick people out. We can seat more people. As you can see, we have upright freezers and coolers. They're adequate, but sometimes we get donations and we don't have any room for it anymore. Right now they're pretty full. But if we got a donation from Second Harvest or something, and sometimes it's a, it's a donation like, we have a lot of chicken, we have a lot of beef. If we don't have room for it, we can't accept it, so we have to turn it down. As you can see, even the dry storage is very tight, and this is where the kitchen's office desk is. So let's walk on back down this hallway, which is very narrow. It's certainly not ADA compatible. And we have our two bathrooms down here, not handicap accessible whatsoever. If you were in a wheelchair or something, you would have to come all around our building, into the back alley, back where the dumpsters are, and come through this door right here. You'd have to ring the bell and somebody would have to let you in, and then you'd have to navigate through that narrow hallway because there's a ramp down to the kitchen. And that's not always easy either. Back here we have very limited parking space. Um, we have one handicap accessible space and, and two others. And as a result, um, that's our only off-street parking. I just can't wait till we get to our new building. It's gonna make a huge difference. The facility is gonna be almost three times as big as our current facility. Um, it's gonna be handicap accessible. The ramp out front, side door on the side, and lots of off-street parking. It's gonna be a building that's welcoming. As you enter the building, of course, we'll have a receptionist area with a lobby and off to one side, and then on the other side, we're gonna have our membership lounge. And then as you walk down the hallway, it's gonna be a huge dining room, which is also gonna have lots of windows and natural light a kitchen that's very functional, and a storage area right behind the kitchen with walk-in freezer, walk-in cooler. On the other side of the, of the back of the building will be the food shelf with, once again, lots of storage for the food and lots of area to work to, to put the food in the bags and distribute it. And then as you get on the elevator, which we don't have in this building, or take the steps, which will also be very accessible, uh, we'll go up to the second floor. And the second floor is going to be divided up into like three basic areas the massage, acupuncture, and shiatsu area, the rooms that we have, there'll be 10 of them. And that whole area is going to be zoned with its own heat control. And then on that floor, we're going to have the uh, case management offices, which they, right now, are like impossible to have privacy because they're not really well soundproofed. Um, but there'll be nice case management rooms in its own area. Um, also on that floor, we're going to have the administrative offices. Another great thing about our new building is the location, 38th and Nicolette. It's in a neighborhood that's vital, but it's a neighborhood that's been welcoming us since the beginning. Um, so it, once again, we want to become part of the community. Um, this is a disease that I believe that we're all living with in one way or another. And I think having this new building, no, I know having this new building is going to make a huge difference on the face of AIDS in the metropolitan area here in Minneapolis and St. Paul. This is a place that I have found, the six years that I've been coming here, that it really helps the mind, body, soul, and spirit. That's why we call it a life.